Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on our Boost Your Youth webinar this morning. My name is Erin Larson. I'm Director of Education here at Hydropeptide. So today we're going to be talking about our hero products. We'll be doing a refresher on Hydropeptide's top 10 best-selling hero products, as well as giving you a review on how to use Firmabrite with those hero products. We'll also hear from our professional marketing director, Ashley Jada. I have her, her here with me now. Hi, everyone. And she's going to be talking about how you can capitalize on the power of these hero products to grow your business in a meaningful way. So today, we're going to be, like I said, we're going to start with our brand tenants, but then we're going to talk about um, our Boost Your Youth focus. So really what we're focusing on uh, for sales and product knowledge, uh, focus for our clients for the next two months or really, I guess, the next month, <laughs> as well as hydropeptide heroes, and then talking about how to boost those heroes to grow your business. So just as a review, we like to uh, talk about our three brand tenants, what hydropeptide is, our brand philosophy, and really what we stand for. So hydropeptide is geneticist developed. We use the principles of epigenetics to help skin look and act younger from the inside out. And even more unique than that, we have a geneticist, a Dr. Kitchen, Dr. Neal, on our team, and he is our lead formulator. That's really unique in the industry uh, to have the doctor as the lead formulator, especially an epigeneticist. Uh, so we are so, we, we feel so fortunate to have Dr. Neal on our team and really leading the way with our cutting edge technology and our new products. Clinical results. We deliver superior results by combining clinically tested ingredients with healing botanicals. I'll add to that by saying we provide immediate results with no downtime. So after one facial treatment, clients are gonna see a difference in their skin. Uh, often they feel like they're, they're hooked from there and it really makes retail, retailing a lot easier because it's more natural when they are excited about seeing changes in their skin. And I'll also add that we have several products that have undergone clinical testing. Uh, to validate their results, and we'll be looking at a few of those today. You know, some of this information will be a review for those of you who have been with us for a long time, but that's kind of the, the, the point of today. Ashley and I were talking about all of our hero products and thinking that, you know, it, it, sometimes it's nice to just revisit things that we've known for a long time, but maybe we're not, you know, fully taking advantage of. So I hope you'll still gain something from today, even if, you know, you've seen these products multiple times before. And then finally, luxury experiences. We believe every formula should provide an elevated sensorial experience. And luxury experiences aren't just fluff for us. They're not just a nice to have. They're a very important part of helping a client to achieve their skincare goals. Because when someone loves using a product, that's when they're going to continue to use the product even when they go home. Doctors call this compliance. And it's really important uh, to make sure that our clients are compliant with our directions even when they leave the treatment room. And the best way to do that is through a luxury experience that they look forward to. All right, so let's jump into our hero product. Again, this is information that you may have kind of heard before, but I hope to you know, reinvigorate your excitement about these products because they really are our top selling products and they have a lot of power, not only to transform your client's skin, but also to transform your business. And Ashley's gonna talk more about that focus and you know how you can use these to strategize to grow your business at the end but for now let's review the products and so we're going to go over these charts that you're somewhat familiar with if you've been on a webinar before and then we're also going to take a deeper dive into one ingredient in, in each product today so cleansing gel is our cleanser toner makeup remover this is a multifunctional product it's so great for those people who either need a very simplified regimen or those who have sensitive redness prone skin. It is part of our anti-wrinkle plus sensitive collection. But that being said, I'll also add that this is a great go-to cleanser for absolutely anybody. If you're not sure which cleanser to recommend, anybody who walks through your door is gonna do great with cleansing gel. We have a moisturizing peptide. So even though this is a more of a gel consistency, we're still getting added hydration. Peptiskin is a collagen supporting peptide. We're going to talk about this, I think, in the next product because it's in a few of our products, uh, but it's a triple action collagen supporting peptide. So that means it's going to help to boost collagen in the skin. It's going to help to reduce the breakdown of collagen, and it's going to help to inhibit glycation or collagen cross-linking and hardening that can happen as we age. 
as I said, it is a gel consistency and it has a foaming activity, but it's still sulfate free. And we're able to achieve that because we use Amaranth S, a foaming peptide that creates a luxurious experience without stripping the skin. This Actifite complex you'll see throughout our products. It just means that it's an antioxidant blend. And then uh, you can see over on the right hand side what that blend consists of per product. So in this case, it's not only antioxidant, but it's also an astringent blend because it has that witch hazel and geranium. That's what makes cleansing gel so great at uh, acting as a toner as well. And then in addition to that, it has green tea, chamomile, cucumber, apple, and calendula. So these are rich, potent antioxidants to help protect against free radical damage. And finally, Alantuan. This is an ingredient you'll see throughout our collection as well. It's an anti-irritant from the comfrey root. And it's, it's kind of a more traditional, almost like a European ingredient. Uh, but I've, I've often said we like to use what works, period. So if that means we're using cutting edge peptides, fabulous. And if that means we're using tried and true, um, more classic ingredients, then that's great too. And you'll often see a, a combination. So let's take a look. And we actually are talking about pepto skin in, in this um, part of the presentation. So pepto skin is one of the peptides in cleansing gel. And you can see here um, the untreated control on the left side and then a test with pepto skin. So what this is measuring is decorin, uh, which is a binding agent for collagen. So it's really critical to the health of our skin overall, our extracellular matrix, uh, pepto skin. Is, has been shown to increase decorin after 72 hours. Um, and in this case, it was quite an increase. And you can see visually um, that there's an increase in, in that decorin um, in this image. So that's gonna help to facilitate collagen production in a meaningful way. All right, please just feel free to submit questions at any time. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going through. Exfoliating cleanser. This is our energizing renewal, part of the anti-wrinkle collection. And it's really a classic product for us. Uh, so many people are in love with exfoliating cleanser because it does a great job of improving lackluster, dull skin, giving a gentle exfoliation, but without stripping the skin or causing irritation. Uh, this is a product that's particularly popular with men. I think they really feel like it's doing something because we have those jojoba beads. These jojoba beads are perfectly spherical, so they're not gonna cause any micro tearing or irritation. Uh, the jojoba oil is the closest oil to our skin's natural oil, so it's very skin healthy. And it's a great time to uh, have a reminder that we don't use any plastic micro beads in our products. So anytime you're feeling uh, an exfoliation, you see beads or uh, you have any kind of scrub type product, those are all biodegradable and eco-friendly. We can see again that this exfoliating cleanser has the foaming peptide and the collagen supporting peptide that we just talked about in the last slide. So some similar ingredients. We'll often get asked, you know, with something like pepto skin, why do we put it in our cleanser if we're just going to wash the cleanser off? Uh, we really believe in repetition with peptides. It's so important to signal the skin over and over again in order to get the best benefit possible. And so we want to have peptides even in our cleanser so that every step of your regimen or your client's regimen, we have that peptide signaling. As far as it being washed away, you know, the time that it takes to massage in that cleanser, uh, really work it into the skin is enough time for it to have contact with your skin and you're still getting benefits from those peptides. This particular Actifite complex has green tea, chamomile, ginseng, and rosemary. This has a gorgeous citrus scent. It's really nice for the morning time uh, because it's uh, nice and energizing, and it's also going to prep the skin if you are someone who wears makeup or your clients are. It's going to give a nice smooth finish before applying makeup. Uh, we finished with that hyatazine solution, same as in the cleansing gel, it's a moisturizing peptide. So even though we're exfoliating with this product, we don't have to strip the skin. We can really add hydration back in. So cleansing gel at night is a great option because we're removing makeup and then exfoliating cleanser in the morning. Uh, they're just a perfect partnership. So let's talk about one of these peptides in the exfoliating cleanser. This is inuline. And you may be familiar with uh, 
the way that neurotransmitter inhibitor peptides work. Uh, I'll review that first before we talk about how inulin works. So over here on the left is kind of what happens naturally. Uh, and then over here on the right is what happens when inulin is involved. So, and this would be true for any of those Botox-like peptides. Uh, we have a chemical in our skin that's released called acetylcholine. And when this acetylcholine is released, uh, it, it reaches this receptor site, and when it, we'll, we'll jump to the end and then I'll talk about the middle part, but when the acetylcholine reaches that uh, receptor site, the acetylcholine is these blue dots, not the, not the yellow ones, but the, when these blue dots reach the receptor site, that's when a muscle contraction occurs, and when the muscle contraction occurs over and over again, that's when we get a wrinkle, okay? So this Acetylcholine, these little blue dots reaching the receptor site, is really what we want to avoid in the skin. And inulin is a peptide that has one way of fighting against that. Because in order for that chemical acetylcholine to reach the receptor site, first a process has to occur called agrin binding. And that's what you're seeing in the middle here. So these little yellow dots connecting here, that's that agrin binding process. And once that occurs, you can see it kind of moving out of the way. These receptor sites become viable and available to receive that acetylcholine. And that's what we don't want. We don't want that to happen because that's what causes the muscle contraction. So the acetylcholine is released. The agrin binding occurs, making the receptor sites available to receive the acetylcholine. So that's what's happening naturally. But inulin is going to actually interfere with agrin binding. So you can see that agrin binding is being attempted here, but inulin is kind of getting in the way. So those receptor sites never become viable to receive that acetylcholine. And of course, this is a, sort of a transient process. It's not 100%, so we're not saying we're blocking all acetylcholine or anything like that. Um, it's much more, uh, it's, it's much less black and white than that. Uh, but you can see how inulin is helping to reduce the amount of acetylcholine that reaches the receptor site. So I want to make it really clear as we go over ingredients at this level that I don't expect you to be, you know, necessarily explaining this to every client or anything like that. This is really for your own knowledge and certainly something that you can share with your clients if you feel that they're the type of client that would be interested in. But um, it's, it's really just for you to have context and feel really confident with the ingredients that you're using. So let me know if you have any questions with that. Uh, but this is, I just love these Botox-like peptides. I think it's so interesting because they all act a little bit differently in how they are ultimately stopping acetylcholine from reaching the receptor site. That's really what they're all focused on. All right, moving on, pretreatment toner. This toner is really has a cult following as far as toners go. I mean, I think toners are so important, but sometimes clients don't realize that or they don't really connect it. They have a hard time seeing why, especially now that cleansers have come so far, toners aren't quite as critical as they once were. Uh, but now we're adding so many secondary benefits to toners that they really are a, a great addition to any skincare regimen. This is another product, pretreatment toner, that absolutely everyone can use who walks through your door. So it doesn't matter what their skin type is, doesn't matter what their concerns are, it's gonna benefit everyone because it's brightening, it's hydrating, it's alcohol-free, and it's gonna help to balance the skin's pH. So you can see here we have citrus stem, which is an orange stem cell extract. This really helps to firm the skin and it has some brightening benefits. Melfade PF is a combination of uh, these really well-loved skin brighteners, Fairberry and Stable Vitamin C. Even in this toner, we have those potent skin brighteners. Inulin, we just talked about. That's that wrinkle-relaxing peptide that helps to, it, it interferes with the process of um, muscle contractions in the skin. Peptiskin is that triple action collagen-supporting peptide we talked about at first. Our Actifite complex here contains uh, antioxidant-rich skin brighteners, including licorice and mulberry. We have geranium, which is an astringent, so perfect for a toner. Green tea and chamomile are both going to just be calming and soothing, so perfect for all skin types. And then hyatazine solution. We've seen this in each of the products that we've talked about so far. This is a marine alternative to hyaluronic acid. So it's really going to provide immediate hydration. It's drawing hydration to the skin, provides an immediate uh, improvement in 
wrinkle appearance because it works similarly to hyaluronic acid. So it's going to quickly and effectively hydrate the skin. Uh, and of course, we still want to use a moisturizer, depending on the skin type, to lock in that hydration, but it's going to do a great job of adding water to the skin. Power serum. This is a big one. Um, I actually, so one of the questions I got for from the webinar on uh, in January was, what's the most universal serum, and what's a product I can recommend to everyone? So those were two of the questions, actually. And power serum is a great answer for both of those. Power serum can be used for anyone, uh, mature skin, younger skin even. We can kind of help to start addressing the aging process. I think really after 25, this is perfectly appropriate because we're going to be fighting against the aging process that's starting. It may not even be visible yet, but it's starting underneath. Um, you know, even an acneic skin can use this. It's not going to interfere with any acne treatments or uh, acne blemishes. It's really perfect for everyone that's concerned about aging, which I've met very few people that are not concerned about aging. So I think most clients that are coming in for facials do have that concern, even if they have other issues as well. Uh, okay, taking a look at some of the ingredients, some wrinkle relaxing peptides, inuline that we just talked about. Cynake is another wrinkle relaxing peptide. Um, this one's really interesting. I did, I talked with Allison Shoemaker. She oversees um, our business really throughout the U.S., so um, nationwide, and she's had so much experience speaking with estheticians, speaking with clients, and even in her own aesthetic background, and so I just, I love picking her brain, and she, she talked about um, the temple viper venom mimicking effect of cynic. So the cynic peptide is, in, it's uh, inspired by the mode of activity of temple viper venom, so snake venom. Uh, there is no snake venom in this peptide. You don't have to worry about that. But it's really interesting how they took something that's happening in nature and they were able to mimic it using peptide signaling. So this is really going to help to relax muscle contractions as well. Uh, Elagacy is a collagen booster. This is the same collagen booster you'll find in Nimni Cream, not the patent, but uh, a, the other supporting collagen booster. And then we have Idealift, SynTC, and Peptamide 6. These are all structural integrity peptides. We're going to talk about SYN-TC and its constituents in just a minute. Phytosan-K is really going to help to protect the skin. Uh, it has regenerative effects and it's going to protect from UV damage, not in the same way a sunscreen would, but from an antioxidant perspective. And then we finish with hyaluronic acid. So we're going to talk about SYN-TC. Uh, you can see a dramatic reduction in wrinkles around the eye area using SYN-TC. And it's actually... Uh, a hybrid peptide. So having been with hydropeptide for almost eight years, it's been interesting to see the evolution because some of the really powerful peptides that we've used in our products over the years have now been combined into this one superpower peptide called SYN-TC. So we're going to look at the three peptides that make up this one in just a minute. It's quite impressive. Um, but real quick, I want to show you another picture. Um, and and that, the three that I'm going to talk about will give you an idea of what SYN-TC is actually doing on the skin level. So here you can see a dramatic reduction in wrinkle depth. Uh, that blue area means that it's uh, much deeper and there's almost no blue left after 28 days. So um, dramatic improvement in overall skin texture and wrinkle reduction. So as I said, SYN-TC is made up of three peptides in the complex. The first peptide is syncol. You may have heard of this before. Syncol works uh, by helping to release this tissue growth factor beta, uh, which is really important for stimulating collagen production in our skin. But you can see here that this tissue growth factor is bound. It's unavailable. Um, but when we introduce, naturally, we would introduce a, a chemical in our skin called uh, thrombospondin. But syncol can act similarly to thrombospondin. So if we don't have enough of it as we age, syncol can kind of be a stand-in, and it can help to release this tissue growth factor that's so important for stimulating collagen synthesis. So again, we really want to break this, this little green guy, this tissue growth factor free, but we need either thrombospondin or call in order to do that, and that's going to sort of create this collagen cascade in our skin. 
Okay, so let's take a look at before and after with syncall. Dramatic increase in collagen and a resulting wrinkle reduction. Okay, that's after 84 days of use. So that's just one of the peptides that's found within SynPC. The next is Syntax. You've probably heard me talk about this a lot. It's a really good one. Uh, it's considered a structural integrity peptide. It's helping to stimulate not just collagen and elastin, but also integrin, fibronectin, laminin, all these really important proteins in the skin that are important for that suppleness and bounce back. I really like this little uh, cartoon here that just kind of shows the, the process. So really we're helping to anchor the skin, we're helping to give it suppleness and bounce back of use. Uh, it's all these different proteins are working together to give that springiness and anchoring to our skin. This is really the, the structure of our skin. Oops, go back really quick. Uh, and then over here you can see that, uh, that these are collagen fibers and so, well, it's a representation of collagen fibers. You can see that when we're young, these Fibers are kind of random, they're kind of spread out, and that gives our skin a lot of support. But as we age, they're bundling together, and you can see that these gaps start to happen, and that's where we get sagging skin. Uh, so syntax is really going to help to bring back that. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we want disorganization with collagen fibers uh, so that we have a lot of support to the skin. So uh, that syntax is going to help with that. And then the third peptide that's found in SynTC, it's in Hycan. This is shown to boost skin's renewal of hyaluronic acid, so it's really helping with hydration, which hydration is very connected to collagen production. Um, the more collagen we have, the more hydration our skin can hold. Uh, so it's very important overall for skin health. So let's look at one more, just to wrap it up, one more picture. Uh, oh, actually, this is out of order. It's from Syntax. So this is a before and after of Syntax, uh, that second peptide that we talked about. Uh, so this is after 56 days, a dramatic reduction in wrinkles, not just those deep crow's feet, but overall uh, the texture of the skin. All right. Lumipro-C. This is our skin brightening pigment corrector. This has undergone a, a double-blind placebo-controlled clinical study. And I have a before and after at the end of this ingredient to show you. One thing that really surprised us and delighted us when we got our before and afters back from the clinical study is that we didn't just see an improvement in pigment, but we saw a reduction in lines and wrinkles. And that's due to this resurfacing peptide, Dermal RX SRC. Uh, so this is really a multifunctional anti-aging product that's brightening the skin, but it's also helping to reduce lines and wrinkles. Okay, and this is going to address not just uh, existing pigmentation, but future pigmentation as well. And it's overall just going to illuminate the skin. So you can see we're using a stable form of vitamin C. The trade name of that is BVOSC. That's why we have that in parentheses. Um, but for those of you who are into the different forms of vitamin C, we're using tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. Metabiotics resveratrol. Uh, resveratrol is a potent antioxidant. If you're familiar with the antioxidant benefits of wine, then you're likely familiar with uh, resveratrol. But this metabiotics part means that it's more bioavailable than other forms of resveratrol. So it's, our skin is more able to recognize and make use of this form of resveratrol. Brightenil is uh, an ingredient that we're gonna look at it before and after in just a minute. It's a probiotic skin brightener. So it's activated by our skin stratum microbium, the, the bacteria on our skin, and it helps to reduce the, uh, the melanogenesis process. It helps to block that at several levels. Algactive light skin is a liposome encapsulated microalgae. This is gonna help to brighten the skin. It's evening out the overall tone of the skin. And then we finish with a blend of brightening antioxidants, including daisy, ginger, and pine. So taking a quick look at that brightenol. So um, I actually don't have how many days this is. I, it's got to be under, it's under 90 days. I would assume it's closer to 60 days. Um, and of course, I have that information somewhere. I just didn't include it. Uh, but this is a dramatic reduction in pigment. And you can see it's not just in those, those uh, spots where she has dark pigment. It's really everywhere. That's why I always recommend that Luma Pro C is used full face. Sometimes people want to use it just on a specific spot. But we really have most of the time we have damage underneath. Our clients have damage underneath their skin uh, that isn't visible yet. 
but will come out as they age. And so it's really important to treat even the damage that we can't see on the surface. Okay, and then here's a couple of before and afters from our clinical study on Lumaprosi. So this was using Lumaprosi twice a day for eight weeks. You can see a dramatic reduction in pigment. And over here you can see, you know, a softening of those lines and wrinkles as well. Okay, I authority. This is another one of those products to answer that question, what's a product I can recommend to anybody? Eye authority can be recommended to pretty much everyone who walks through your door. I did also get the question, you know, what's the difference between eye authority and uplift? Uh, eye authority is focused on dark circles, puffiness, fine lines. Uplift is more for crepiness, bagging in the lid area, um, someone who needs more of a tightening effect. Um, so that can be really good for more mature skin. But eye authority is going to be great pretty much for everybody. Uh, we start out with Haloxyl. This is a multifunctional peptide, but its primary focus is to reduce blood pigmentation under the surface of the skin. We know that the skin around the eyes is some of the thinnest on our body, and it's uh, one of the first places that we show age. And so if we have any leaky capillaries or blood pigment underneath that can show through in the form of dark circles, we want to address that using Haloxyl. Um, and we're going to take a, a quick look at some before and afters after this with Haloxyl. The Trixyl Sense 6 is a firming peptide. So we want to you know, build up the structural integrity in that eye area. Beautify is going to help to strengthen those leaky capillaries, that, that whole microvascular network, we're going to help to strengthen that so we have less blood pigmentation to show through the skin. Pearl powder and mica are a different approach, but still very important. So these are more cosmetic ingredients that are going to help to create an immediate brighter result or brighter appearance to the eye area. Plankton extract is helping to reduce age spots, uh, dark spots around the eye area. And then we finish with vitamin C and E with olive extract. So these are skin softeners and uh, helping to reduce free radical damage. So with eye authority, um, this is a, it's a really good example of how we have immediate and long-term results because right away the eyes are going to look brighter and healthier with that crushed pearl and mica. And then over time, the peptides are going to work to truly uh, help to improve the, the source of the issues uh, for dark circles, puffiness, and fine lines and wrinkles. Okay, so taking a look at Haloxyl, uh, you can see here, you know, if we have leaky capillaries underneath, it's visible through that thin eye skin and creates a dark under eye circle. But if we can use an ingredient like Haloxyl um, to strengthen those capillaries, then we can help to uh, reduce the appearance of those dark circles. And here's some results. So let's see, um, I believe, let, uh, let me take a look at this. So the placebo, I'm just trying to break this down for the before and the after. Yeah, so the placebo was used on the, um, on the right side and the haloxyl was used on the left side. Okay, Nimni cream. This one's a little bit longer because I want to talk to you about uh, Dr. Nimni and, and our patented collagen support complex. But Nimni cream, if I could use one word to describe Nimni cream and Nimni day cream, what they're focused on is collagen. We're helping to boost collagen. We're helping to uh, improve the functionality of our skin and creating new collagen. So we use that patented support complex uh, to provide the physical materials, the building block for collagen in our skin. That's really what this Nimni patent is, patent is doing. Uh, we also do include a time-release retinol at 0.25% in Nimni cream. So it's a very low percentage on purpose, so we can get the benefits of retinol without the irritation. And that time-release also helps with irritation because it's not going to be so aggressive. Uh, over time, we're getting a little bit. You can see here we do use SYNPC. Remember, that's that peptide we talked about that contains three different peptides, uh, SYNCAL, SYNTAX, and SYNHICAN. Neodermal and elagacy are great antioxidants that help with boosting collagen, improving structural integrity. We do have some ingredients that are helping um, 
with penetration of, of other ingredients. And then we finish with vitamin C and E, uh, both as antioxidant forms and skin softeners and brighteners. But the powerhouse ingredients here are really going to be that Nimni patent and that time-release retinol. So let's take a look at Dr. Nimni really quick, and then we will um, talk through exactly how Nimni cream is improving the health of our skin. So again, some of you may have heard this before, but I just like to review because Dr. Nimni has such an impressive and interesting past. Uh, so his career started in 1955, so he's literally spent a lifetime researching collagen. Uh, he is world renowned. He's a scientist from the University of Southern California. And we like to say he wrote the book on collagen because he literally has five volumes entitled Collagen. He wrote five books just about collagen. Uh, and he also wrote the chapter on collagen in the Encyclopedia of Human Biology. So needless to say, he is the authority on collagen. <laughs> he discovered type two collagen, which is a collagen type that's found in human joints. Uh, and received numerous awards from the uh, National Institute of Aging Division of the National Institute of Health for his contribution to collagen research. He's been published over 300 times, and he holds more than 20 patents, one of which is used in Nimni cream. So for this slide, I'm going to talk about the similarities between Nimni cream and Nimni day cream. So these three activities that we'll discuss are you're getting those whether you're using Nimni cream or Nimni day cream. The first is that we want to wake up the fibroblast. We really want to help to improve the health and the functionality of the cell that creates collagen, the fibroblast. So we do that using Elagisi and Neodermal. These are potent botanical antioxidants that are really going to help to nourish that fibroblast. Number two, uh, we're using peptides like SYNTC. Remember, that's that one that has three different peptides in the complex to signal for collagen production. Uh, that's gonna help to increase collagen synthesis. Uh, we're kind of tricking the skin into thinking too much collagen has been broken down so that it will kick it into high gear and create more collagen. Uh, but you know, number one and number two, a lot of companies could claim to be doing this and they, they probably are. We feel we're doing it best because of the way our formulas are synergistically created, the way we combine ingredients together to get the best benefit possible. Um, but many, quote, collagen creams on the market may be doing similar things. What's really unique and revolutionary about Nimni cream and Nimni day cream is number three. We're using the Nimni patented collagen support complex. So we're the only company that's using this patent. Uh, and it's enhancing collagen production, but it's doing that by providing the vital material for collagen synthesis. So those building blocks of collagen. Uh, so you can have, you know, I use this analogy, you can have a five-star kitchen, you can have a, like a state-of-the-art kitchen, you can have a highly trained chef, but if you don't have the groceries there to create a delicious meal, you're not going to be successful. And so that's really what's happening with our Nimni cream. We are providing those materials to create healthy collagen in the skin. And then uh, the difference between Nimni Day Cream, I'm actually going to start on the right-hand side here, is that Nimni Cream contains, as we mentioned, that 0.25% time-release retinol, and Nimni Day Cream has no retinol. So that means if someone is sensitive to retinol or they don't want to use it during the day, they have the option of using Nimni Day Cream, which has environmental protectors. Um, these are anti-inflammatories, great ingredients for daytime use. Now, if someone doesn't want to use retinol at all, they can absolutely use Nimni Day Cream twice a day. It's not a problem to use it at night. If they are starting to use Nimni Cream, we recommend that they start out uh, kind of conservatively and use it two to three times a week and then increase the tolerance. Okay, and here's some results. Oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at the, the study. So this is an overview of the clinical study that we did. And then I really think the most compelling part is the results from the clinical study. So this is Nimni Cream twice a day for eight weeks. You can see a dramatic improvement in the forehead wrinkles. Even the overall tone and texture of the skin is so much better. It's plumper and more volumized, and even the redness is reduced. So a big difference in eight weeks. And um, the results of the study said that the, the benefits that they saw would, would have continued and been even more uh, noticeable at 12 weeks. So the study was just eight weeks. All right, facelift. 
Facelift is our ultralight moisturizer. It's great for anyone with normal all the way up to dry skin. Um, so it's also perfect for a daytime moisturizer because it's packed with these antioxidants, these skin protectors. It's really helping to fight against free radical damage and environmental aggressors. Uh, this top ingredient is what we're going to talk about uh, today. I think I'll just go over to the slide. This L22 Lipid Complex. It's designed to deliver the skin surface lipid profile to the barrier function of a healthy 22-year-old. I just think that's such a funny way to, to brand it, but um, we do have uh, some studies using this L22 Lipid Complex, and you can see that's in purple in each of these charts, and it's outperforming um, any other combination and any other ingredient. So it's helping with barrier recovery uh, more than any other ingredient that it was uh, compared to, things like olive oil, ceramides, things like that, straight water. So very, uh, very good for our barriers. The facelift is great really for, for anyone. And then if they have very dry skin, we can recommend Powerless. This is my personal favorite. I tend to be very oil dry, so I use it twice a day. Many of you probably know that about me already because I've said it so many times on webinars. <laughs> um, but this is packed with wrinkle relaxing peptides. You can see that cynic peptide we talked about earlier, idealist and uh, cerilocene. These are structural integrity peptides. We do have a little bit of a skin brightening benefit with Power Lift. And it has four different classes of hydration. So it has humectant to draw in hydration. It has emollients to immediately add hydration to the skin. Ceramides act kind of like skin glue. You can see that pineapple ceramide, so they're gonna help to reduce transepidermal water loss. And then shea butter is gonna lock it all in as our occlusive. This is a beautiful, ultra-rich moisturizer. It smells gorgeous. It has sort of a botanical scent, but very balanced. And the best part is it really allows you to treat dry skin in a way that many other rich creams don't because clients love wearing Power Lift. They don't feel like it's sticky or heavy. Uh, and so they're not, you know, objecting to using a more rich cream when they are using Power Lift. So Cynic, I had talked about a little bit earlier in the presentation. But let's take a quick look here. Um, this is a different image, but it's similar to when we were talking about uh, that that acetylcholine being released and reaching a receptor site. Okay, so Cynic is also going to help um, in that process, but it's working at the receptor site to block acetylcholine. So it's, it's sitting in the receptor site so the acetylcholine can't sit there. Okay, and it's been shown to reduce the frequency of muscle contractions and reduce the appearance of, uh, of wrinkles. Okay. Getting there. I think we're right on time. All right, Solar Defense Tinted. This is a product that I feel overcomes all the reasons people don't like wearing sunscreen. So those people that say, I only wear sunscreen when I go on vacation, I'm in the sun and don't want to wear it every day. Those people that feel like, you know, it's sticky or they feel like it has a white tint to it. They don't like the smell. This overcomes all of those. Uh, first of all, we're starting with just physical sun blockers, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So it's just going to be a, a physical shield to the sun, so they don't have to worry if they are sensitive to chemical sunscreens. Um, chemical sunscreens are great, too. We have several products that contain those, but uh, physical blockers can be useful for some people that are sensitive to sunscreen. Benucene is going to help with infrared protection. And, you know, sometimes people are concerned that sunscreen is going to break them out or it's an extra heavy layer. In this case, we're using complexion control ingredients, including Galinga root, which are going to help to maintain a clearer complexion. Uh, we're hydrating the skin, even though this has a nice matte finish. It's packed with antioxidants to help support sun protection. And uh, in the end, we have aloe vera, allantoinic chamomile. These are beautiful anti-irritants, perfect for spending time in the sun. This also has a beautiful acai scent, so it doesn't smell like a traditional sunscreen. This is another one of those products that can be recommended to everyone. Uh, if you have a man who doesn't want the tint to it, uh, then you can recommend the non-tinted. Uh, April, great question as well. So I'll answer Liz's question, then we'll move on to April. So Liz's question was, um, about the color adjusting sphere. The client asked me how the process of the self adjusting tint adjusts. Uh, you know, is it, let's see, 
is that the process of the color adjusting spheres as they oxygenate. So Liz, it's really just that they're breaking down. Uh, and as we're massaging those color adjusting spheres into the skin, they're breaking down and we're just, we, we massage until it blends. And so they're kind of changing color as they break down and then we are able to stop at the right color essentially. Um, so let me know if that doesn't answer your question, but it's really just that they're bursting uh, as we massage them in our hands first, and then they're able to break down just to the level where they're matching the skin. Uh, and so April was asking, any tips for applying this SPF over power lift so it doesn't ball up? Yes, uh, this can take a little bit of practice and patience to get it right, but then once you do, it's a lot easier. So uh, there's several reasons why Solar defense can ball or roll on the skin. I'm very aware of this issue. Um, and we actually have a write-up about this that we can, I can ask Jessica to send you April and anyone else who's interested, let me know. Um, but the first, the first reason that solar defense is going to ball up is if there's too much product applied before it. It's really hard to believe that sometimes we're overusing a serum or a moisturizer. Um, and if there's excess product, then it doesn't, this, the solar defense doesn't do very well. So we want to make sure we're being really conservative with our product usage in our serums and our moisturizers. That's the first thing to consider. Um, the next thing is if the mask that you use gets left on at all. I've definitely experienced that, especially like with the balancing mask. It's a light pink color and on uh, low Fitzpatrick skin, a lighter skin, it can sometimes blend in. So that can cause rolling. Uh, another trick, this kind of goes back to uh, when you have too much product on the skin. When we're applying product and it's accumulating on our fingers, that also counts as too much product. So wiping your hands on a dry towel in between the application of your serum, moisturizer, and solar defense, or at least right before solar defense, is going to help tremendously. I know it sounds like an extra step right now, but it, it's a really easy habit after a while. I just do it kind of without thinking now, and it really helps to uh, apply the solar defense without it rolling. You also want to make sure that you're not using too much solar defense. That's easy to do, but I caution you there because we want to make sure that people have adequate coverage as well so that they're protected from the sun. So hopefully that helps, April. Um, those are my tips. I, I very rarely get rolling anymore because I've kind of, you know, just worked through that process. So it may take a little bit of adjustment, but in the end, it's worth it for this beautiful product. All right, let's take a look at um, some different aspects of sun protection. So these are uh, different types of sun protection that we use in our product. Uh, well, the top two are, and then we'll talk about the bottom, but we use mineral or physical sun blockers, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Those are just gonna reflect the sun um, at, like a physical shield. Chemical sunscreens interact with our skin in order to uh, reduce sun exposure, so they do need to be applied about 20 minutes before sun exposure. In our products, that includes avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, and octosalate. Uh, we do not use the chemical ingredients oxybenzone or octanoxy that have recently been banned in Hawaii due to reef degradation. Uh, so we've never had those in our chemical sunscreens and we don't use them in any of our current formulas. So some of the benefits of SPF, I mean, this is a little bit elementary. I'm sure you know this, but I just find it helpful to review this type of information because it's so great to share with clients. You know, they don't always understand why sunscreen is important. They just know that they should use it, but that's not enough for them to feel like they want to, you know, um, you know, take on that extra step. So reminding them that this is, if they're concerned about age spots, sunscreen is the best way to reduce that. Collagen degradation, many clients don't know that the sun causes wrinkles and sagging skin. We know that, but it's really important to remind them of that. Thing with the wrinkle formation and collagen degradation. Uh, free radical damage, this is a term that's thrown around a lot, but what we need to remember is that free radical damage causes inflammation in the skin. We know how damaging that can be in our skin and in our body, uh, and it causes a cascade of, uh, you know, inflammation and, and negative effects in our skin that can really impact the overall health and ultimately appearance of our skin. Uh, so I guess I kind of talked about inflammation already, but these are just really simple things to remind your clients about if they are resistant to wearing sunscreen. 
Another interesting point is that, you know, there's a lot of conversation about the difference between different SPF levels. Um, but SPF 30 blocks 97% of UVB rays. So, you know, when we're talking about a 30 versus a 50 versus the 100 that, you know, they can't claim anymore, the, there isn't as much of a difference as it might seem. That's why there are more regulations going up about what they can claim for SPF because it's misleading. A 100 SPF sounds much more protective than an SPF 30, but it's really a difference of less than 3%. Uh, and then it's also important to know that no sunscreen can block 100% of rays. Um, so the, the difference is, is quite small in SPF versus SPF or SPF 30 versus 50. I'm not saying don't use a 50, but it's just good to know um, what, the, what the real numbers are. Another kind of myth about sunscreen is that you can stay out longer with a higher SPF, and that's, it's just not true. I mean, there, there may be some, you know, kind of scientific basis for that, but ultimately, we should be reapplying sunscreen every two hours regardless of the SPF. So that overrides any calculation for how long we can stay out in the sun. Any sunscreen should be reapplied every two hours minimum. Okay, and then it's also important to know that, you know, sunscreen is a very variable conversation. It's not, it's not an exact science um, because, I mean, at least not on a consumer level, maybe scientists could be calculating this, but the, your average consumer at the beach is not gonna be able to tell the difference, right? Um, but the exposure time for sunscreen can vary throughout the day. What I mean by that is you can go out for one hour at 9 a.m. and get a certain amount of solar energy onto your skin. And if you go out at 1 p.m. when the sun is more direct, in just 15 minutes, you can get that same amount of solar energy onto your skin. So people think, oh, I have sunscreen on, I can go out for two hours or or maybe they've calculated based on the SPF, I can go out for this many minutes. And it's just not that straightforward because it also depends on what time of day it is, how much sun exposure they're actually getting based on their clothing, their hat, their location on, on the earth. Um, so it's really important to just stick with these standard, um, you know, kind of proven things like, like reapplying every two hours to make sure that we're covered. Um, I don't have a before and after for the solar defense because we just have never taken one because it's just it's sunscreen. Um, but I do want to show a picture that maybe some of you have seen before. It's just a nice reminder and something that you can pass on to your clients. Uh, this is a picture of twins, one of whom used sun protection throughout their life and one of whom did not. So you can see uh, the dramatic difference, not just in pigmentation, but if you look kind of beneath that, even, you know, wrinkles and sagging skin, and even inflammation, which could be, you know, due to a number of factors. But, um, so just a pretty impactful image. Um, okay, if you're out all day with makeup on, how are you supposed to reapply SPF? You know, there are products out there that are like, you know, powder, powder SPF that can be reapplied. I really feel that our solar defense is a great option for this because it does have that tint to it. Um, you know, you can reapply it right over your makeup and it just, like if you're wearing foundation, it just kind of blends in. So you're, you know, using that foundation that's already there, you're applying the SPF, it's a physical blocker, so it doesn't have to be 100% in contact with your skin in order to be effective, it's just a shield. Um, so you can reapply it over makeup. Uh, you certainly don't have to take makeup off and reapply. I mean, I think that would probably be the ideal, but it's totally unrealistic. So solar defense tinted is a great option to just throw a little bit over your foundation and it blends beautifully. So we're just gonna look at Firmabrite. Uh, we recently had some education on this. So again, it's probably um, some repetition, but I think it's important to revisit this information. So Firmabrite is our 20% vitamin C booster. Uh, this is using a stable form of vitamin C. Oh, I'm sorry. This has the wrong, the wrong chart on it. Uh, so you'll just have to listen to me verbally instead of, <laughs> this is for the firming mask. Um, but it does still have a firming vitamin, or I'm sorry, a stable vitamin C. In this case, we're using sodium ascorbyl phosphate, not L-ascorbic acid. Um, for very specific reasons, the L-ascorbic acid would degrade very quickly in this uh, type of bottle. Uh, but we're also using a brightening peptide, 
um, Grand Active 1518, so that's going to help to brighten the skin. We're using niacinamide, uh, which really helps to brighten and support the brightening ingredients. So Firmabrite is just a, a really well-rounded way to not just brighten the skin, but at 20%, we're able to help to firm the skin as well by inducing collagen production. I recommend using this once to twice a day. I've been using it twice a day, and it, I've had zero irritation, which I thought I might have some, and there's been none. Um, but three to five drops in any moisturizer or serum is going to help to brighten and firm the skin. Um, Let's see, there's an irritation after three to four nights using. Is it normal? Uh, do you mean for the Firmabrite? I'm going to assume you mean for Firmabrite. Yes, some people are more sensitive to, firm, to vitamin C, so Firmabrite, than others. So if someone has very sensitive skin, it's totally expected for them to have some sensitivity to vitamin C. Even if they don't have sensitive skin and they just don't do very well with vitamin C, that can be an issue. So you can treat it kind of like Nimni cream. You can recommend that they start out maybe twice a week using this, just once a day, twice a week. Uh, and then they can increase to tolerance, meaning they can use it more frequently each week uh, until they start to notice just a, a little tiny bit of irritation and they can back off and then they'll know how much their skin does well with. It is a pretty high percentage, so that's why some people can experience irritation, especially in the beginning. Okay. So Firmabrite is fabulous for uh, boosting the efficacy of some of our other hero products. Uh, any of these products do really well on their own, but by boosting them with Firmabrite, we can get even more benefits. So Powerlift is a great example, and it's actually the number one product we recommend mixing with Firmabrite. The experience is really luxurious. Uh, we're getting that, that brightening from Firmabrite, but we're also getting uh, collagen boosting from both products, and we're able to lock in moisture and lock in hydration, um, which is great, especially for a mature skin. So does it have to be mixed or can you use it direct? Thank you, April. That's a great question. It can be used directly on the skin. Um, some people will experience irritation more easily that way. Some people will be totally fine. So it's just a case-by-case -case basis. I will tell you part of the reason that we have this as a booster is because vitamin C is traditionally kind of a tacky ingredient to work with. It just can feel kind of sticky. So there is a little bit of that sensation with Firmabrite. So if they're using it directly on their skin, if they don't mind that, that's fine. Um, but it's, it's a much better experience if it's mixed into a moisturizer or serum. So absolutely, they can, they can use it directly, just a little bit of a different situation. Uh, okay, and then quickly we're going to talk about mixing it with power serum. So this is a great combo for uh, fighting wrinkles, uh, kind of a, a powerhouse anti-aging combination. You're getting brightening, wrinkle relaxation, and this is great for someone who maybe doesn't want to use power lift because it's too rich for them. They can use Firmabrite in their power serum. Firmabrite and Nimni Cream is your collagen powerhouse. Nimni Cream is so focused on collagen, boosting collagen, really improving the functionality of how the skin creates collagen. And then when you add a 20% vitamin C to that collagen boosting regimen, I mean, the results are incredible. So you can put three to five drops into Nimni Cream at nighttime. It's a great combination. And then if someone's more focused on brightening, they can combine Firmabrite into Lumipro C. That's, that's your, your brightening uh, perfect partner. So Lumipro C is a great daily brightening serum that uses a lower level of vitamin C, so we're not getting as much risk of irritation, uh, but we can combine that with Firmabrite. Firmabrite, the vitamin C that we use, is less irritating than other types, like less irritating than L-ascorbic acid can be. So it is meant to be used by a wide range of skins, but you still want to be careful. So that's a great combination, three to five drops in Lumipro C to really amp up the results. Okay, uh, Phyllis says, one of my clients saw a big result using it daily for a week. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Phyllis. That does not surprise me. We're actually going to talk about um, some of the conversations you can have with around Firmabrite, and the story that I'm telling in that conversation coming up is true, uh, so a similar experience to what you're saying. Would it be too much for the skin if we use 15% vitamin C in the morning and then Firmabrite at night? It's always case by case for the person, but I would say that's fine because, like I said, I, I mean, I don't have 
super tough skin, but it's also not really sensitive. But I've been using the 20% morning and night, and I've had zero irritation. So it's definitely possible. All right, keep those questions coming. I'm going to pass it over to Ashley, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use all this information that we just talked about, all these hero products to boost your business. Okay, did you guys know that hero products drive return business? So I have some really fun stats on a few of our top selling products. So Power Serum, which is our one of our top products, um, we had 43% of new customers return within three months to purchase this item again. So one of the things we know in SPA is that we have built a really strong relationship and trust with our clients and that we want to recommend to them products that we believe will make a difference in their skin health as well as give you kind of the immediate results you're looking for. Um, and so one of our, most of our hero SKUs, um, we've seen this sort of repeat customer purchase. So what in my mind that does is drive traffic back into your spa to continue purchasing. Hopefully they'll be running out of product and then would like a they'll want some more and maybe think that they haven't seen you in a while and that they probably need a facial as well. Um, so I authority actually had 40% of new customers return to purchase again within the first three months. Powerless, this number was 51 and a half percent. So that's over half of people coming back within three months to purchase this product. Uh, facelift was at 42%. And lastly, solar defense tinted at 27%. As you guys know, sunscreen um, is probably a little bit more of a seasonal skew. While we all know that it shouldn't necessarily be, um, we did see probably an increase in business. And then kind of in looking over the time over the year, um, we were selling more of it kind of during the summer. And then it kind of tapers off into fall and winter. So those are just a few stats. Um, really to talk about why these hero SKUs are important to your business. And then really, how are we capitalizing on these hero SKUs? Managing inventory. So a lot of times with hero products, they tend to turn quicker. And by turning quicker, that means that I'm actually selling more, which means I generally have less stock. So while I might buy three of everything in the line and make sure that I have three in stock. One of the things that you might want to do with these top SKUs is to make sure that you've got a little extra back stock specifically in these SKUs because you will move through them at a little bit quicker rate. And there's nothing worse than your esthetician uh, going to recommend a product that they love and being sold out of it. It happened to me. We were at an event. It was right before Christmas, after Black, or it was after Black Friday, but before Christmas. And they were sold out of three or four top SKUs that are kind of my go-to for always recommending for anybody who's looking for hydropeptide product. So it's really, really important that for these SKUs specifically, you are kind of watching if you're moving out of them too quickly, how do you just make sure that you order a few more? Um, and this is something your AE can, of course, help you with. They can look at how many you're selling kind of on average over a month. And if you're, you know, consistently going out of stock, they can kind of look at your sales um, that we've sold to you in the last year and give you kind of an average and maybe advise on where you can bump up some of that inventory just to make sure um, that you're seeing an increase in sales. Um, the other thing is, is you want to make sure that you're not trading sales. I know we have a lot of really exciting new SKUs that come out every year and that we always want to add, add, add to our line and make sure that we're getting the newest and freshest products. Um, but you really want to make sure that you're, you're managing the inventory in your top SKUs because that, those are the initial products that people fall in love with, which then help them come back to buy the other um, subsidiary products that work so amazingly together. Um, next is commit to education. Um, so this is really important. Um, this is why we did this webinar today, is making sure that your team is educated on these products, um, not only from an ingredient standpoint, but also 
um, understanding skin types, who to recommend to, what's a universal SKU that's great for everybody if you have someone new, um, as well as kind of just making sure your team's onboarded. And again, your AEs and Aaron are here to help um, with whatever you may need. Um, and most of our hero product information that you learned from Aaron today is also available on our Bridge platform. If you don't know about Bridge, um, shoot Aaron an email. She'd be happy to give you some more information um, to get onto our education platform. And if you don't know already, you can always reach me at education at hydropeptide.com. Admittedly, I am a few days behind on that. So if you sent me an email, I apologize. But I will <laughs> soon be caught up and feel free to reach out to me there. Okay, so next is focus on visibility. What does this mean? So you have shelves of product and you try and organize everything by collection to make sure that it looks as pretty as it can in the two minutes you have to kind of make sure that it's pretty and or stopped. Um, but really what you want to try and do is make sure that your hero SKUs are at least, or your anti-wrinkle collection, I would say, and targeted solutions are at eye level on your shelves. Um, this also creates an ease of shopability and a focus on these are our most important SKUs. And if they're kind of more towards the floor, you get a little, you know, sidetracked. So you want to make sure that they're focused and visible, um, as well as testers are really important. People who try product are way more likely to purchase that product that they try on their skin. Um, so making sure that not only our beautiful retail boxes are out, but that there are testers available for your clients to test and try. Eye level is buy level. <laughs> and then lastly, um, personal stories. So personal stories are really important because they help um, continue that trust level that you have with your client, as well as establish authenticity. Um, you know, if you go talking about the ingredients that are in a product, that's really great from a, a customer perspective. They know that you're educating them and that they're learning. But really what they want to hear is why you love the product, why you feel it's something that's important to them to try. So I'm going to turn this over to Erin, and she's going to give you two different stories um, and talk through why personal stories kind of help um, sell the product a little bit better and you know this isn't just a concept in skincare this is all over business in general the importance of a personal story for brands for products whatever it is um, and so I have given you a lot of ingredient information because you're professionals um, you you know can kind of understand this on a deeper level but then it's up to you to craft how you approach your clients about this and what additional personal stories you include um, in order to connect with them on these products. So I'm gonna give you two scenarios. One sounds a little bit more like what we did today, which would be just if you took what I gave you and kind of repeated it. And the next one is gonna be if you added a personal story element to it, and we can think about which one is more compelling from a client's perspective. So from a bright two ways. Uh, you could say something like, Firma Bright contains 20% vitamin C, a brightening peptide, and a collagen-boosting botanical blend to boost collagen, that's kind of redundant, <laughs> combat fine lines and wrinkles, and brighten skin. If you use it twice per day, you can expect to see plumper, more radiant skin in just a few weeks. So, I mean, if that's something you say to a client, that's great. There's nothing really wrong with that. It's just very black and white and straightforward, and only a certain type of client is going to respond to that. But the second option is something that many more clients are going to respond to because it's, it's easier to understand and for them to feel. So Firma Bright contains 20% vitamin C, which is not only going to brighten skin, but it's enough to plump your skin too. My client Malia did thousands of dollars of laser treatments, and within two weeks of using Firma Bright, she started seeing holes in her pigmentation that she'd never seen before, that had never been there before. When she told her dermatologist about it, her dermatologist said, I guess you could have saved a lot of money if you'd known about this product sooner. And this is a true story. Sorry about the typo in there. If you didn't see it, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but this is actually um, one of our vendors, I guess you'd say, um, had this experience. So this is a true story about Firma Bright. And you can see how it's, it's a lot easier for your client to put themselves in Malia's shoes and think, I want that. 
experience. And now I know a real person has experienced this. Um, so, you know, you can think about what's more compelling for which type of client, but we would bet that adding personal stories is going to help you increase your sales tremendously. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really, we know how busy you are seeing clients and everything else, and we truly appreciate you investing the time with us. You will receive a recording of this uh, in a follow-up email. And if there are any other questions, feel free to type those in the chat box, and I'll hang around for a few minutes and answer them. Happy selling. Thank you so much.